Welcome to Africa Info Hub. In this video we are going to talk about 10 interesting facts you did not know about Democratic Republic of Congo. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates. The Democratic Republic of Congo, originally Zaire, is a country in Central Africa. It is the second largest country in Africa after Algeria, and the 11th largest in the globe. With 92 million people, the Democratic Republic of Congo is the world's most populous officially Francophone country, as well as the fourth most populous in Africa after Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Egypt. Here are the 10 interesting facts you did not know about Democratic Republic of Congo. Number 10. Music is its biggest export. Musicians like Kofi Olomide, Papa Wemba, and Werison can fill clubs from Johannesburg to Paris as fast as Justin Bieber. The main musical forms of Congolese rumba, sukas, and indombolo are accompanied by specific dances. Wendo Kolosoy began his seven-decade career singing aboard the Congo River barges. His tunes, including the mega-hit Marie Louise, inspired millions of couples throughout the continent to dance. Many of today's young people like the more daring and energizing indombolo dance routines it's loud, rude, and incredibly popular. Fans of celebrities are as fervent as fans of European football clubs. The musicians also spawned the well-dressed sapers. Even at night, sapers must wear the nicest European cut suits, matching Italian leather shoes, and sunglasses. If you see a yellow Ferrari on the streets of Kinshasa, it's probably a top sapper driving it. Number 9. The Concorde was a regular visitor to Congolese jungle. Vadalite's airfield was developed for the Concorde and the retired plane came often to park his sleek supersonic plane in his jungle-carved French town near the Ubangar River, dictator Mobutu Sissiko built one of Africa's longest airstrips in the middle of nowhere. Badalite may be the world's oddest town. Wide boulevards were dug out of the tropical jungle near Mobutu's birthplace in the 1960s, inspired by small-town France. Just like in Paris, Marseille, or a town on the Belgian border, Two palaces dominated the town, one a massive complex of Chinese pagodas. Mobutu built the largest nuclear bunker in Africa, out of worry for his own safety. There was a 12-kilometer tunnel leading to the Ubangar River. After being robbed multiple times since Mobutu fled approaching rebel forces in 1997, Badalite is gradually regaining lost ground. Number 8. Kinshasa is world's second-largest French-speaking city. Kinshasa is the world's second-largest French-speaking metropolis behind Paris. Nobody knows how many people dwell in Kinshasa, but a safe estimate would be around 10 million. The number of people fleeing war in other parts of the country has increased considerably in 15 years. Kinshasa's French-language credentials permitted it to host the Summit of La Francophonie in October 2012, the world's largest meeting of French-speaking leaders. Number 7. The Congo played role in World War II. The uranium for the Manhattan Project came from the Shinkalabwe mine in Katanga province. It had been closed since 1939 when the U.S. military reopened it. Colonel Ken Nichols negotiated for the acquisition of almost 4,000 tons of uranium ore from the mine, transferring a fourth of it to a Staten Island warehouse for use in the project. Before the war ended, the Americans bought 30,000 tons. Shinkalabwe has been closed since 2004, yet private miners still try to make a living from what they can extract on their own. On the other hand, Kinshasa still has Africa's first nuclear reactor. Number 6. Locals eat mayo with everything. The overwhelming fondness for big gobs of mayonnaise on practically everything is a remnant of Belgian colonial rule. Many prefer it with the hot native chili sauce called as Pyri Pyri or pepper in Swahili. This cools the pepper and flavors the mayo, making a great combo. All four cities have restaurants with cuisine ranging from Congolese to Belgian. Kinshasa boasts of the most variety of high-quality restaurants. Many outstanding, reasonably priced Lebanon eateries due to the huge Lebanese population. Number 5. Kinshasa and Brazzaville are the world's closest capitals. The world's nearest capitals are Kinshasa and Brazzaville in the Republic of Congo. The Congo River, the world's second largest by volume, separates them by 5 kilometers. 
there's been discussion of building a bridge between the two cities for decades, but commute is still by boat. Passengers can pick between a more luxurious and peaceful speedboat ride or one of the crowded boats. Ferries transport flour, dried fish, vehicles, and furniture. Disabled people can cross for free and are heavily involved in the product's trade. The two capitals are only a few kilometers apart by water, and their populations speak the same language, but they often act as if they were from different worlds. Brazzavillans, a quiet population of over a million, fear their noisy, partying neighbors in Kinshasa. Number 4. The Rare Okapi. The Okapi is one of 1,500 indigenous animals to the Congo. It lives in the remote Ituri forest in the country's northeast. This forest giraffe is 6 feet tall at the head and 5 feet at the shoulder. The Okapi Wildlife Reserve was established in 1992 to conserve the remnant Okapi population and the Mbuti Pygmies environment. The reserve on the Epilu River is home to 5,000 Okapis, 4,000 elephants, 2,000 leopards, and many more species. Number 3. The Congo isn't overrun by the Ebola virus. Films like Outbreak and Congo have propagated the myth that Ebola is as simple to catch as a cold in New York. There have been epidemics in the country, most notably in Kikwit in 1995, which to the lives of about 200 people, but they were rapidly suppressed and are now rare. Ebola is exceedingly dangerous and is spread to people by infected meat. Many Congolese outside the cities rely on bushmeat for protein, and public health initiatives are ongoing to warn them of the dangers. Number 2. Potential to be tourist paradise. The region was a popular tourist destination before the 1990s, when it was stable. The provincial capitals of North and South Kivu, Goma and Bukavu, are both on the banks of Lake Kivu. The area near Goma, which is surrounded by the Virunga Mountains, has a wonderful similarity to alpine lakes in Europe. The Virunga National Park to the north and the Kahuzi Biga National Park outside Bukavu are also close by. Both have been designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The Virunga National Park covers a wide range of habitats, from lowland plains to the 5,000-meter High Ruenzeri Mountains, more than 16,000 feet. It's home to the world's largest herd of hippos, as well as the continent's most active volcanoes, the Nyiragongo and Nyamilajira. One of the last regiments of eastern lowland gorillas, a subspecies native to the country, can be found in the Kahuzi Biga National Park. Over the previous two decades, poaching and a lack of finance have made park maintenance challenging, but a determined handful of Congolese rangers in both parks have done their best. Number 1. Hotel sector is decent, growing and expensive. Kinshasa had only two international hotels until 10 years ago, the Memling and the Grand Hotel, which had previously been intercontinental. The SN Brussels Airlines Group owns the Memling, and the Congolese government owns a portion of the Grand Hotel. The Grand Hotel was also home to government ministers and the senior echelons of the Angolan, Namibian, and Zimbabwean soldiers dispatched to support Laurent Kabila's government, following Mobutu's fall in 1997 and during the subsequent war between 1998 and 2002. The Grand Hotel is currently undergoing a much-needed facelift, and its guests are mostly from the corporate world. Meanwhile, as international business people come to the country, at least six more decent hotels have opened in the city, with many more planned, ranging from expensive to basic. Those seeking for a good deal will most certainly be disappointed. The cost of a hotel room in Kinshasa ranges from $150 to $200 per night, with high-end hotels charging upwards of $300. The same can be said for lodging in Lubumbashi, the copper mining city. The eastern cities of Goma and Bukavu also have a considerable number of hotels, some of which are quite nice, and most of which have stunning views of Lake Kivu. What do you think of our video? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thank you for watching.